Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. As promised, here is my in-depth comparison between the newly released Gemini Live and the ChatGPT Plus. In this video, I will test which one delivers the most natural voice experience and the best answers in multiple questions. So without further ado, let's jump in. I will start with the generic questions and here is the first one. My son is turning 12 in October. Would you help me with birthday ideas? Absolutely. A 12th birthday is a big deal. Does your son have any hobbies or special interests I could work into ideas for the party? He loves football, PlayStation video games, and puzzles. And his favorite football team is uh, Liverpool. All right, a Liverpool-themed party with a little friendly competition could be awesome. Oh, we uh, I forgot to mention uh, that he, his favorite player is Mo Salah. Mo Salah. Right? That's awesome. We could try to find a way to get a personalized message from him. It'd be a super cool surprise for your son. But if that's too tricky, we can definitely still make the party all about Liverpool and Mo Salah. Can you give me something more creative? A scavenger hunt with Liverpool and Mo Salah clues could be awesome. You could hide little gifts or photos around the house with football or Mo Salah themed clues. Or maybe renting a couple of arcade games would be fun. Think air hockey or basketball. You could even turn it into a little tournament with prizes for the winners. Would you be able to remind me five days before his birthday to prepare myself? So I can't set reminders yet when we are live, but if you want, I can help you out with some websites where you can create your own reminders. Do you want me to find some for you? No, thank you. Gemini Live gave me some good suggestions, but I didn't like that it couldn't set a reminder for me, which is totally unexpected as Google Assistant or the normal Gemini can do this, which is a bummer. Now let's try ChatGPT. Of course, uh, for a 12 year old, there are so many fun ideas depending on his interests. Does he have any specific hobbies or things he's really into right now? That might help narrow down the best options. He loves football, PlayStation video games and puzzles. And his favorite football team is Liverpool. That gives us some great directions to explore. Here are a few ideas based on his interests. One, oh, uh, I party. forgot to you mention a Liverpool FC themed party uh, you could have. The first thing worth noting here is the chat GPT doesn't allow me to interrupt using my voice and it says at the bottom that I need to tap the screen, which doesn't feel as a natural conversation as Gemini. So let's move on. Decorations. In oh, I forgot to mention that his favorite player is Mo Salah. Even after tapping the screen to give it more info, it kept loading for a while without getting back to me showing a text at the bottom saying hold for manual control, which made it even less intuitive. Oh, I forgot to mention that his favorite player is Mo Salah. That's awesome. Mohamed Salah is such a great player. Um, you could incorporate him into the birthday celebration in a few ways. Uh, one, Salah themed cake. You could have a cake decorated with an image of Salah or his jersey number, which would definitely be a hit. Two, Salah jersey. Uh, Mohammed Salah jersey or even a full Liverpool kit with his name and number on it would make a fantastic gift. Three, highlight real viewing. Set up a mini theater where you show some of Salah's best goals and moments. Um, you could even make it a trivia game where the kids guess what happens next in each clip. I like the chat GPT ideas more and it gave me a lot of them. So I will fast forward this part to save time. Would you be able to remind me five days before his birthday to prepare myself? Absolutely. I'll make sure to remind you five days before his birthday so you can get everything ready. Do you know my son's birthday? Uh, you mentioned that your son is turning 12 in October, uh, but I don't have the exact date of his birthday. Um, if you let me know the specific date, I can make sure to remind you five days before. The 1st of October. Great. I'll remind you on September 26th to prepare for his birthday celebration on October 1st. It was funny that the chat GPT said it would remind me five days before the birthday without knowing the actual date and I had to push it to ask me for this information. But at the end, it was able to do it while Gemini couldn't. So overall in this scenario, Gemini offered the most natural conversation and it was more stable while ChatGPT was better in offering more ideas in addition to the ability to set a reminder. So I will call it a draw. I need your help in remembering a movie name. It's a Spanish movie about a couple. The husband decided to kill his wife after discovering his affair, but later he found that he accidentally killed his neighbor instead. That sounds like a really interesting movie. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything about a Spanish movie with that exact plot. Do you remember anything else about it, like roughly what time period it came out 
or who starred in it. Any other details might help me track it down. Maybe 2022 and uh, the husband was an engineer. Um, he had an affair with his uh, colleague at work. All right, a Spanish movie from 2022 sounds promising. Do you remember the name of the engineer husband or the colleague he was having an affair with? No. Okay, it's a little harder to track down something if we don't know the names of the main characters, but I can try searching for other clues. Do you remember anything about where in Spain the movie takes place? Or if there's any action or drama besides the husband's affair and the accidental murder? Or did the movie have a tagline or poster that you remember? Maybe their son had a problem, a health problem. I had a long conversation trying to give it as much information as I could and it got it right at the end. So let's skip to this part and jump to the answer. All right, I'm pretty sure I know which movie you're talking about. It's called Loving Adults. And it sounds just like the Spanish drama you described. The husband does find out about his wife's affair and accidentally kills someone else. You might enjoy it if you liked that kind of suspenseful drama. Yeah, that's exactly the movie. Thank you. The movie you're describing sounds like The Invisible Guest, original title Contratiempo. No, it's a different one. Thanks for the clarification. The movie you're thinking of might be The Hidden Face, original title. It's not this one as well. Uh, let me think a bit more. The movie you're describing could be The Body, original title El Cuerpo. ChatGPT got trapped in giving me more wrong suggestions one after the other without asking me more clarification questions like Gemini Live did. And after a long time of back and forth, it couldn't get it right, so the point goes to Gemini Live. The next category is to test which one is better in pulling information from Google services. Gemini Live has access to the most important extensions like Google Maps and YouTube. It sounds like a clear win for Gemini Live, but unfortunately it's not always the case, so let's give it a try. I want to go to Dubai Mall from Ajman via public transportation. What's the fastest route regardless the cost? And please provide me with detailed instructions about the bus numbers, the metro station names, and available timings. I recommend taking bus C10 from Ajman. It goes directly to the Dubai Mall and takes about an hour and 15 minutes. You can check the exact timings on Google Maps. Let me know if you'd like me to look up the exact bus stop locations for you. Weirdly enough, I couldn't find any information related to bus C10 in Google Maps. Plus, none of the options provided offers a single bus to the destination as mentioned by Gemini. So let's try ChatGPT. To get from Ajman to Dubai Mall via public transportation, the fastest route involves a combination of a bus and the Dubai Metro. Here's a detailed step-by-step -step guide. One, bus from Ajman to Union Metro Station, Bus route E400, departure location, Ajman bus station, destination, Union Metro Station, Dubai. Travel time, approximately 50 to 60 minutes. Bus, approximately 50 to 60 minutes. Bus for 30 minutes. Starts around 5.30 a.m. and runs until midnight. Sure. ChatGPT gave me the fastest route in Google Maps as shown now on the screen, plus the timings and the travel duration with a lot of instructions too. That gives the point to ChatGPT and puts Gemini in a very bad position, so let's try the next one. Give me a summary about the performance and battery life of the Google Pixel 9 Pro based on MKBHD's review on YouTube. So I looked up MKBHD's review of the Google Pixel 9 Pro on YouTube, and here's a summary of what they had to say about performance and battery life. First up, the Pixel 9 Pro's performance is really snappy. That's thanks to Google's new Tensor G4 chip. You'll notice apps open way faster and everything feels smoother overall. Even graphically intensive games run pretty well, though you might see a few stutters here and there. Now for battery life. It's fantastic. Seriously, the Pixel 9 Pro can easily last you a full day, even with heavy use. If you're someone who's always on their phone, you might need to charge it up at night. But for most folks, it should hold up. Did you want to know anything else about the phone? In MKBHD's review of the Google Pixel 9 Pro, he highlights the phone's strong performance thanks to the Tensor G4 chip and 16 gigabytes of RAM, making it smooth for everyday tasks. However, the phone shows some limitations with high graphic gaming, such as occasional frame drops and heating issues. Regarding battery life, the 4,700 milliamp hour battery provides all day usage with some charge left over. The charging speed is decent, but not the fastest taking about 90 minutes for a full charge, which might be slow for some users. 
Both got it right, so one point each, but the problem here is Gemini Live didn't have any advantage over a chat GPT in Google services and it was even worse in Google Maps. Before jumping to the last category, let me tell you more about the Wallpapers app by in-depth tech reviews. Wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app is now available on Google Play Store. It will give you unlimited access to my exclusive wallpapers that are carefully designed to match your taste and work nicely with material you theming. But there is even more. The app will give you the flexibility to edit your lock and home screen wallpapers separately. You can add blur, adjust the brightness, or even change the colors to make it your own. And to match the edits for both screens, tap the copy edits button so you don't have to repeat yourself. Lastly, you can save and sync your favorites across all your devices by signing into your Google account. The app is available on Google Play Store with a 50% discount for the first month to be at $1.99 instead of $3.99 and here's what you will get. Lifetime access to all wallpapers, 12 new exclusive wallpapers every week, plus all the previously mentioned features. The download link is in the description and I'm eagerly waiting to hear your feedback. The last category I have is to ask some technical questions to see which one will give the best instructions and I will jump to the answers as the replies were too long. I have two separate Excel sheets, both include the sales orders but the columns are different and I want to merge them into one sheet. How would I achieve this? If you want to get fancy, you can use VLOOKUP to match up the sales orders. It's basically like telling Excel to find the same sales order in both sheets and copy over any matching information. Now I merged the two sheets. My second question is how to create a table to show the number of orders and the total money spent per customer. You can use a pivot table. It's kind of like a magic tool that can summarize your data in different ways. First, select all the data in your merged sheet. Then go to the insert tab and click on pivot table. Choose where you want to put the pivot table, maybe a new sheet and hit okay. Next. If you're looking for an easier, more automated way to merge data from two sheets in Excel using formulas like VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH, or XLOOKUP for newer versions of Excel can be very effective depending on your specific needs. Now I merged the two sheets. My second question is how to create a table to show the number of orders and the total money spent per customer. To create a table that shows the number of orders and the total money spent per customer, you can use a pivot table in Excel. Here's how you can do it. Step-by-step -step guide one, prepare your data. Ensure your merged data sheet has columns that include customer names or IDs, order IDs, and the amount spent per order. Two, insert a pivot table. I was really impressed by the level of instructions given by both, but the ChatGPT has the edge as it gave me more options like VLOOKUP, Index Match, and XLOOKUP, not only VLOOKUP like Gemini, so one point to ChatGPT. The last question I have is about a real problem I had with my desktop PC that I fixed by changing my power supply unit as it couldn't provide enough power while editing videos, which took me days of troubleshooting, so let's see which one will give me the closest match to the solution. I have a problem with my desktop PC. While editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, suddenly the fan noise becomes louder and the PC restarts. I did some troubleshooting like making sure my Windows is up to date and reinstalling Adobe Premiere Pro, but the issue remains. What else could be the reason behind this? Your PC restarting while you're editing videos in Premiere Pro sounds like an overheating issue. When your system gets too hot, it'll often restart automatically to prevent damage. Here are some things you can try. First, make sure your computer case has plenty of airflow. Check that the fans are clean and working properly. Dust can build up and block airflow. Also, make sure the vents aren't blocked by anything. Next, monitor your CPU and GPU temperatures while you're editing. There are apps that can do this and let you know if things are getting too hot. If they are, you might need better cooling solutions like upgrading your CPU cooler or adding more case fans. My temperature is fine. What else could it be? All right, let's look at some other possibilities. It's possible that you're running low on RAM, which can make your system unstable, especially under the heavy load of video editing. You might wanna check how much RAM you have and see if adding more would help. Another thing to consider is your hard drive. If it's old or starting to fail, it could cause random crashes. Try running a hard drive diagnostic tool to check its health. I checked all of this and they are not the reason why. What else could it be? Okay, let's dig a little deeper. It's possible that there might be an issue with your video card or its drivers. Try updating your video card drivers or reinstalling them completely. You should also run a benchmark test on your video card to see if it's performing as it should. Also, try editing a shorter video or a less complex project to see if that helps. Sometimes really intensive projects can push your system too hard. 
I think my video card is fine. Do you have any other suggestions? All right. Unfortunately, we've covered most of the common reasons for a PC restarting during video editing. It's looking like you might need to get a technician involved to figure out what's wrong. They'll have the tools and expertise to do a more thorough diagnosis. Would you like me to help you find a computer repair shop near you? Gemini Live narrowed down the issue to thermals only and offered all the related solutions to this assumption, but it didn't take the power issues into account, so let's see if ChatGPT will get it. It sounds like your PC might be experiencing overheating or power-related issues, especially since the fan noise increases and the PC restarts during heavy tasks like video editing. Here are a few possible reasons and steps you could take. One, overheating. Check CPU and GPU temperatures. Use software like HW Monitor or MSI Afterburner to monitor the temperatures while you're editing. If they get too high, above 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, your system could be overheating. Two, power supply issues. Check your power supply unit, PSU. If your PSU isn't providing enough power, especially under heavy loads like video editing, it could cause your system to restart. Uh, you might need to upgrade to a higher wattage PSU if that's the case. ChatGPT was very precise. It took into account the power issues. It gave me the app names to monitor my PC temperatures, what's considered a high temperature, and suggested to change the PSU, which is the exact solution to my problem, in addition to all the instructions Gemini Live gave me, which I skipped to save time. So ChatGPT takes the point, and here's my final conclusion. Overall, Gemini Live will give you the best human-like experience and more voices to choose from, but it feels like an isolated island as it doesn't communicate properly with other Google services or even the data available on your mobile phone. I do think it's smart enough to rely on, but it's not the smartest as a chat GPT is still in the lead. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my comparison between ChatGPT Plus and Gemini Live. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.